John Park, three-time world champion, North America's greatest ever player, and the subject of our Twitter and Facebook question and answer session. These are all questions from our fans that have right. come in for you, John. So um, yep. there could be some tough ones, could be some easy ones. First one we'll, uh, we'll come up with is from Alex Crouch, who asks, what did you enjoy more, winning the world championship title or hitting a nine darter on stage? Oh, Alex, I enjoyed both very much. Uh, but uh, being a world champion and winning world championships are, is much more important in the long run. But uh, the nine darter was a joy to me because I kind of wondered if I'd ever do it and suspected I wouldn't. So that was a nice surprise too. We've got one from, from Stu, Stu Witt, 3684. Also one from, from George Grayson asking similar things. You've obviously won three world championships. Do you think you can go on and win a fourth? I think it's always possible that I could win another one. Um, I just need to get my uh, everything going in the, in, the, in the right frame of mind. Um, I'm the sort of player that I'm a bit of an opportunist uh, when I am going well, when others aren't going so well. And uh, when you have the right frame of mind and you're in a tournament, it's you see all the other people losing rather than worry about losing yourself. And it's, it's a good uh, good strategy and it's a good frame of mind to be in. And, uh, you know, I, I've been very successful with that in World Championships where everyone's a little bit worried and more uptight than normal, but uh, I just keep my stuff together as, for what it's worth and uh, do my best. Now, I, I get the feeling the answer to this next question might be related to one of those answers. This is from Alex Osborne who asks, what's the favourite match you've ever played in? Well, the favourite match I ever played in would be uh, the 2003 World Championship final where I finally beat Phil in, in, a, in a major final because I I think that was my third consecutive major I was in the final of and I'd lost the previous two to Phil so um, it was also special in that uh, Phil hadn't lost in that event for eight years so I think that's probably a, a standing record for not losing in a particular event uh, so I, I ended that but uh, more importantly I won you know, and uh, I was very, very close the uh, July before the match play. I was 16-15 ahead of uh, Phil, and uh, he pulled out a 160 out shot on me where I was down below him and uh, swung the end of the match around and, and took that away from me. So uh, it was quite sweet to get that 2003 victory. And just to take you on to the, the other side of the hockey, if you like, this one's from Craig Hadley, asking if there's a particular favourite match you've watched as a spectator, if there's anything that stands out. Well, uh, I've watched so many darts uh, that nothing really does to stick out in my mind in particular. Um, I've uh, commentated many, I've just watched some. Uh, I've watched scores on the internet at times and thought, wow, that's great darts, uh, where I wasn't even watching the throw, just watching the scores go by. Uh, so, um, you know, I just like a good game, really. I, I don't pull for anybody, other pros necessarily too often. I, just see what happens and uh, it's it's exciting uh, when a guy's really hot like Michael Van Gerwen is now or Phil's been forever uh, to see them challenged by uh, a newer guy and you know, sort of excitement will he lose will he not lose it's, it's that's exciting but um, as, as long as I've been around I, I'm not really pulling for the the, the the favorite to lose but it's just interesting to see them tested now you mentioned Michael Van Gerwen there Scott Bowers and, and Laura have also email, emailed in. Who do you see being the next breakthrough player after the success of Michael Van Gerwen over the last year? So, kind of who you see coming through behind him? Yeah, um, well, there's a lot of young players, uh, not so young, newer players that kind of are uh, getting better and better. Um, as I know this sounds like, you know, Phil after he wins a tournament, and, you know, they're all coming along, but uh, it's true. There, there are. Uh, everyone's getting better as we go. Um, even the guys that aren't doing as well are probably playing better. But it's harder to get results. So uh, I feel myself, I'm playing better than I've ever played. But it, it's a harder field. It's a harder all around. So the answer is everyone's getting better. So how does one person really distinguish themselves? I don't know. And I don't know who it might be. There's a lot of young guys. but. Uh, I can't pick one out of the bunch. It's uh, that's just too hard. <laughs> this one's coming from from Greg McHattie. He asks, "Are you looking forward to the new Star Wars film coming out, and have you got a major role in it?" 
Yeah, I, um, <clears throat> well, I heard that Disney bought out the, the Star Wars franchise and they're planning to do the, the seven, eight, nine films, but I didn't know there was a date or a title or anything yet, so I, I haven't, uh, I hope I didn't miss the auditions, really. Uh, <laughs> I certainly want to watch them, yeah. It'll be, I think it'll be all different characters and uh, basically uh, maybe the R2-D2 and C-3PO in there, but um, yeah, it looks like it's, it's fun that it's going to be, uh, have a new life. And this one came in from Toby Bovingdon as well. Why was your nickname Darth Maple and not Darth Vader? He thinks that's way cooler. <laughs> well, yeah, the dark part of it is partially why Darth. So that's, it's incorporated, you know, into dark. So, um, yeah, Darth Vader would have been pretty cool. But I think at the time the film, the, the first prequel film came out and Darth Maul was a character there and just Maul and Maple was sort of, was there and uh, so that kind of went down that road. I've had a couple of questions coming, Patrick 9191 and, and Matt Giorgino as well asking is there any chance that they'll see you back in the commentary box again? Um, Patrick certainly says the BBC hasn't been the same since 2007. Well that's a very nice compliment. Um, I did get a bit of a taste of commentary last year at the European Championship uh, here in Mulheim and uh, it was nice to do again, but um, still it hurts not to be on the stage and playing, and uh, I'm glad I rectified that for this year, uh, although it was different uh, station, so I wouldn't have been doing it again this year anyway here, but yeah, I, I'm looking towards some opportunities here and there. Uh, we'll see how it goes, but I'm in no hurry to stop playing, and I, and I think uh, it might seem pretty casual to people watching a little commentary that you can just step in and out, but it, it it is a profession and you need to commit to it, I think, to do a good job. So, uh, Not full time yet, but there might be uh, some up and coming uh, guest shots. Now, you mentioned full time profession. Obviously for you, it's, it's, it spends a lot of time traveling backwards and forwards across the Atlantic. We've had quite a few people, Sean Barkley, Shirley Cutler, Linda Davies and, and Dan O'Leary asking, how do you cope with the traveling to and from Canada? And also, do you, do you wish that there were more major tournaments held over that side of the pond? Well, um, I like the fact that, uh, that we have a really good tour emerging with good prize money over here um, in England and, and Germany. And, you know, there's lots of talk, and it's always fun that we add events, but the more events you add, the, the more of a grind it is, really. So, <clears throat> yes, it would be nice if there were more events in, in North America, but maybe then uh, where, where would we lose a few? I, I'm not sure how that would work. Um, the, the one thing I'd really like to see more than anything to support having events in North America is, is getting some live darts on TV over there. It seems like we've never had it really properly live from England uh, at any point in any of the Premier League or anything. It's always the package shows, which it's better than nothing that it's on, but I think to generate the interest you need to fill some stadiums and to promote the darts properly is a uh, <clears throat> like we have tournaments here that uh, first things first get the get the product out as a live package uh, to get Canadians and Americans familiar with it more I know it's a lot to ask it's a very competitive market there but uh, you know, that's probably the first step really and um, one that came in through the Facebook page from from Matt Stoner what do you think needs to happen to make more players from North America competitive on the world stage it's been a, a tough story for a long time to try and get, you know, we, we have a lot of very uh, capable players in, in Canada and, uh, and in the U.S. Uh, and um, how do they develop into pros and, and be on tour all of a sudden? Well, it, it, there's no real stepping stone. It's sort of like you have to just dive in. Uh, Ken McNeil's a great example this year. He's uh, went full-time on the tour and uh, has played the first half of the year and done very well, respectably. Uh, respect, uh, respectably, yes, that's the word. And, uh, but he has to commit to it. It, you, you just, you, it has to be everything. You need sponsorship, uh, probably, in most cases. You need to have somewhere to live. You probably need a visa. Uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Ken. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, that, that's an example of like uh, 
this with everything, it's sacrifices. Uh, I didn't get where I am without sacrificing a lot of different things in my life. And you got to make your choices. You gotta, this is what I'm going to do. This is what you're going to do. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, at this point, there's no answer for, that I can say. Well, we need to have a tour, or this or that. I guess it helps a bit to play the same format, which is what's going on now. But it's just not the same crowds. You see the same atmosphere, so it's, it's, it's a tough call. You mentioned the, the, the emerging North American tour and the, and the championships over there. One that came in from Steve Maracle about the, the events this, this summer in London, Ontario. Says he's looking forward to watching you play. Could we get a picture together? As long as you're there, that is. <laughs> yeah, Steve. Well, yeah, I, I might be there. I might pop in. I, I don't know if I'll be there all weekend. Uh, I'm sort of working my holidays around then, so. Uh, I think I got a way of sneaking in to play a few games, so take a few pictures. Now, Dion Jacobs asks us through Twitter, John, do you still have the same motivation to practice and compete as you did a few years ago? Um, well, I yes, I don't have the same. I have more. I have more. Um, my motivation to, to practice and compete in general is I just love, I do love playing darts. You know, we all say it. Maybe it doesn't always show. And you, you can look like you're tired of it and fed up and you know of course uh, unless you're doing very well on tour you're going to be losing a fair bit so it, it can be discouraging but um, I think the extra challenge of the skill level right now that I was mentioning earlier and uh, it's up there so that it's just a personal challenge you want to meet it you want to say I'm capable of doing this so that's a good motivation and also with the, the PDC's growth and all the prize money, I mean, uh, that's good motivation because not all his players are, uh, you know, as successful in the past 20 years as Phil, you know, and uh, we're still trying to get some nest eggs put away. <laughs> <laughs> well, on, on that line of success, Warren Allsworth has asked us, having qualified for all the TV events for the rest of the year, what are your targets now for the rest of this season? Um, well, yeah, that's... Uh, good question because um, you want to always kind of play in the present and just try and win an event or a match a game you, know, you can really keep shrinking that down and uh, that's where you want your focus and uh, yeah it was great qualifying for everything but maybe you lose a little of your focus then you need to win 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 but that that should be a plus though because then you could you're not over pressuring yourself it, it, the psychology of it, quite frankly, I don't know. I give up. But yes, my goals would be I would like to get a good run to at least like a, a quarter or hopefully a semi or a final in, in some of these tele events so that I can um, get up into the ranking, maybe the top 16. That's got to be my goal before the start of next year and uh, be well positioned also because uh, if you look at this. The strategy of it, I, I had a quarterfinal in the World Championship where I was on tops for the semi. That's another story. And <clears throat> that's still 25,000 I'll have to defend at the, the World Championship. So uh, although it's all pretty good in a way, I do have to keep on my toes. Uh, I'm defending a lot of money from August of the last uh, two years ago uh, when I won in Canada at the London event. And uh, the following week in Derby, I was a runner-up. So um, there's chunks of money falling off my totals uh, left, right, and center. So pretty much I'd like to just maintain my position, if not move up, by doing well in televised events. And just to, to follow on from that, Jordan Mays asks, how far you, do you think you are away from your best, and what are you trying to do to reach the top again? Yeah, well, that's a tricky question again. Like, uh, like I, said, I said earlier, uh, I think you know, I'm, I'm always I'm the better than I've ever been. Really now, how do you define best? Well, Skill-wise, that's what I'm talking about on that side of it. Now, really, what's best mean? I think it's it's winning. <laughs> to be winning and to win a lot of matches, be successful is, is another definition. Uh, and yeah, that's what I'm working on. Um, I think I've seen a lot of good signs this year, including winning the UK Masters. Uh, it was a nice, solid performance and. Uh, I had a runner-up in, in one of the Wigan events. Uh, you know, I've had real, really nice matches here and there. I've also had some real dogs of, of weekends and just, uh, you just want to forget them. But 
Why? It's hard to say. Uh, I try to approach everything the same every time um, because I believe that gets you the most consistency. Yet somehow it's been lacking. So I don't know, just keep at it. I have just now in this past week gone back to my old warm-up routine and I'm hoping that inspires my uh, confidence level on the board during matches. James Basford asks us, what's the biggest difference now from when you, you first came into the game and, and started as a professional? Oh, uh, what's the biggest difference in my game or? In the game. In the game. Uh, the biggest difference in darts is the prize money. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, thank you, Barry Hearn. <laughs> and of course, I guess that that's made and everybody... all the others that work so hard to, to, to make us, uh, and all the fans. I mean, it's, everything's sort of gelled. Uh, when I started as a pro in the early 90s, uh, darts was at a, at a low from the 80s even. And so it was probably as low as the dart had been professionally, uh, the popularity-wise, um, since before it was a television sport, so uh, it was the it was the one real trough the the sports had in television history since it really started in the late seventies. Now Neil Garner asks us about your your grip on the dart. How did the the claw grip that you have come about, and does does the finger resting on the dart make it feel that little bit more stable as you're about to throw? Yeah, it's um, a claw grip, huh? Well, I guess it kind of looks like that. I'd say it's more like a, I kind of cradle the dart, so it's resting there. I, I don't really grip it per se as much as uh, set it onto the launch pad. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, the tip of my dart does get on the point sometimes. Sometimes it's, it doesn't. It depends on the day. I would say I probably go by feel more than any other dart player. I don't try to make adjustments. I don't try to think about anything because I find when I'm doing my best, um, it's just all automatic, um, but I guess the, you know, you, we talk about that in commentary a lot, uh, rhythm players, which I have been in the past and sometimes not, but um, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. You know, when, when you're that sort of a player uh, with that sort of technique, and now, now I'm talking about my grip and my release, that uh, when it's going well, it goes really well. When I'm struggling a bit, it shows. Now, we've had a few away from darts that, that we'll come on to now. This one's from Matt Massil. What's your favourite NHL team? Well, the Toronto Maple Leafs are. Uh, yeah, i got to say that. I'm stuck with them. <laughs> they, they showed signs of life this year and give every Leaf fan uh, heart, you know, heart attacks and uh, all that by the end of it. But there you go. It's all <laughs> part of the fun of being a Leafs fan. Absolutely. Rich Smith asks... If you could choose an actor to play you in a film of your life, who would you choose? <laughs> uh, well, I guess, you know, that's kind of an odd question because you need to get a young guy so he can do the young scenes too. I don't know. Uh, what, one guy that would come to mind for me, uh, I respect. Is a, I didn't, when he first came along, he was kind of had funny roles, but I like DiCaprio. Was, I think he's a pretty good actor. He could probably handle it. He's a great method actor. Um, Pete Bryden asks, who would win in a fight between a cat and a chicken? <laughs> well, it depends if the chicken's been cooked yet or not. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, A.D. Mason asks us, who is your inspiration to take up darts? Um, my inspiration to take up darts? Well... I didn't particularly have an inspiration to start throwing, but when I did start throwing, I kind of liked Bob Anderson's style a lot. Uh, he was a uh, world champ uh, and top player. Um, like the old, you know, I get the, the part sneer thing a lot. I probably got that from watching Bob, or maybe that's just who I am, so I like that. <laughs> because he kind of had his own little snarl and grimaces and stuff he did, and I think that's all kind of cool. And um, just a, a final one, this has come in from, from a few people who are asking about their, their own throw, Michael Carberry, um, Rob Turner, we've had um, Cal Tony in, in Africa as well, asking about developing their own game. What advice would you give to a, a pub player or a, a, a new player coming through? Well, you do want to practice quite a lot. Um, 
And when I say a lot, I, I think often. You know, probably if you could do 15, 20 minutes a day on the board with some sort of simple routine that uh, do wonders for your game and, and how you end up playing against other players, your, your peers, um, give you a big advantage just making that sort of commitment to have a throw every day, even as short as 15, 20 minutes. Just have a nice routine and uh, I think you know, that will carry you forward. That'll build you into better habits. And you probably build up your routine and you'll want to do more and more. And I think when you see results coming from doing that, that I wouldn't have to tell you to do it anymore. John, fascinating stuff. Thank you. From all the fans on our Facebook and Twitter pages, thanks for your time. Uh, you're welcome. It was a pleasure.